past four. Half past four, it's in the morning. And I'm off to the Lake District. <laughs> Got my coffee, so I'm good to go. Right, well I have to say, this wasn't plan A. I've come to shoot the daffodils at Wordsworth Point. But en route, I spotted this little bit of a bay that I'm walking down to now, and there's a boat house. Um, when I got to the daffodils, the light wasn't great. I think it'd be better when the sun comes up. So I've done a U-turn and shot back here as quick as I could to have a look what this looks like. I have to say, now I've got here, the boat house is pretty obscured by, by trees. So I'm just going to have a wander to this point. I hope I've not made a mistake. But, um, very often that's the way it goes when you go off piste, as they say. So, a bit of a rock scramble. I want to get rid of you guys while I get down here in case I fall and make a right fool of myself. Yeah, so. I've arrived at the spot that I think I'm going to take a shot from. It's going to be too late to get anywhere else now. Um, so I'm going to set up here. It's not a bad view. Nice island um, in the middle distance there. And uh, the sun's just about starting to colour the clouds up. It's too late now to to bin this one and go to, uh, go to where the daffodils were. But I really do think that'll be better in a little while when the light's a bit brighter. But for now, I'm going to set up on this bit of a knoll and see what happens I've got to be honest, I don't like it uh, to get back up this bit of a rock scramble make the car as quick as I can and then uh, regroup and have a think about where I go from here. So I ditched the little knoll that I went to first of all and I've scrambled down to this boat house and what appeared to be a really awkward position at first. You get down past the mature trees and down to the bottom and there is actually a gap. So I want to set up because I, I've run out of time now anyway and I need to, need to be getting something and I think the trees will frame the top of the picture. Perhaps, I don't know yet, we'll have to see. But um, ideally I'd like the clouds to, to be in the top part of the picture uninterrupted. But um, this is a, I'm trying to decide what tree this is. It's, yeah, it's an old sycamore. And uh, it's got some nice gnarly twisted branches that, that sort of go over the top of the, the frame. So I might use them. I want to get my gear out quickly and uh, frame it up but I think this is definitely better than the other one I went to just over there um, it's just too empty not a lot going on a little bit of a tricky one this and that what I've got that I'm struggling a little bit with is that place fell which is the mountain in the background is um, quite dark and we've got quite a light foreground and quite a light sky so Use something a little bit different. I'm using two neutral density filters, one the normal way up to hold back the sky, and one inverted um, to hold back the water. And what I, the reason I'm doing that is so that I can get a balance between the two highlighted areas, top and bottom, and get a nice correct exposure for the mountain in the middle. And uh, certainly the two filters. Is helping that. That's definitely better. So I think that will do for here. Time to move on. 
I just want to say, how fantastic is this? Nobody here. So for those of you that do landscape photography, you'll appreciate what I'm talking about when I say that standing here, even though I did get up at four o'clock, drive all the way here in the dark, it's just so worth it, so peaceful. Just the sounds of the stream trickling. Distant pink-footed geese. And the odd mallard. Just cruising around the lake. Green woodpecker. Don't hear too many of them. I hope you heard that. Magnificent bird. Makes the hearse stand up on the back of my neck. So the ecologist in me couldn't help but point these out. These are um, polypody ferns, probably common polypody. There's a southern and a northern variety. Um, but if you're into ferns and you, you're familiar with, well, the, the buckler ferns, uh, stong fern, things like that, these are just a little bit different. And um, when you get them in nice condition, they really photograph well. Um, you get them backlit when they've got the spores on in autumn and uh, they come out for an interesting picture. So there you go, common polypody. So I've had a bit of a look round and I found this lovely group of um, wild daffodils that you can see in the background. What I was really trying to get was a picture with the daffodils and the and the lake beyond um, is proving quite difficult. Unfortunately, there's a guy just over to the to the right there that's pitched his tent that probably shouldn't be there, in all honesty. Um, but the light is really nice at the moment for this sort of thing. Um, it's quite overcast. It's very soft light. So rather than go for the big scene, I've decided to set up and just shoot a sea of daffodils. And I'm just standing here talking to you now and I've just spotted that someone's very kindly left um, a bright red flask just over by the river in the background. So I'm not going to Photoshop it out and we'll go and get it and shift it. One flask, why people do that is beyond me. So I'm going to take it home and bob it in my wheelie bin. I'm shooting, it's gone for about F16, it's quite a lot of depth of field needed for this shot. So I'll just bob over and show you roughly where I'm focusing. My, um, my shot starts around about here and I'm focusing around about here, this plane. And uh, the idea with that is that um, depth of field extends one third in front of the focusing point and two thirds behind it. So the theory is when I take that picture I should have sharpness all the way through the scene. So I've been having a look around, um, looking for close-ups and what I was trying to find was an individual flower head um, that was isolated from the others but with a lot of soft focusing um, around the outside of that flower head and uh, what I'm looking for is a picture that really typifies spring really and I think I found it and what I've <clears throat> got is um, I've set 100-400mm lens up 
and um, I'll just point so you can see what I'm talking about. In the, in the foreground here I've got these ones here. These are forming the base to my picture and I'm actually focusing on this head here. So I've selected an aperture, um, my widest aperture on this lens which is um, 4.5 at this focal length and um, just, to, just to really throw everything out of focus as much as possible. Um, as I've said before, the light is um, really nice and subdued, soft, so it's perfect for this. It really is a nice, pleasant picture, and it's the sort of picture that you can only really get with a long lens. Um, anything shorter, like a wide-angle lens, you just wouldn't get um, that, that narrow depth of field that you need for this sort of thing. I've nipped up to the car and got my kneeling pads out. These are perfect for, for when you're working low to the ground, because otherwise your just knees get, get saturated. So I'm really pleased with that. It was a little unexpected bonus at the end. If you've enjoyed today's video and you want to see more, Please subscribe and press the like button and leave some comments, it really means a lot. So until next time, take care.